<laughs> I have no clue who this is. Most of the time, I think it's ridiculous to post a video on units that haven't been fully revealed. But at this junction, we have a lot of great places to dump our lapis, so I'm pretty sure a lot of players might be trying to budget. But Zaneda here is very intriguing. One look at her Super Trustmaster reward and I can see that there's already a good reason to save her lapis so that you can try to get her. Not only does it boost the base attack by a significant amount, it also has a passive effect that further boosts it when the unit is dual wielding. This is an extraordinary boost to attack that will no doubt remain a pivotal part of any dual wielding physical damage dealer setup. It's definitely worth a Super Trustmaster reward, Mugo, as its stat boosts are different from a plain percentage boost like Dancing Heart Pinello's Super Trustmaster reward. Her Trustmaster reward itself is nothing to pass over either. A 60% boost in attack without any drawbacks, and further gives a weak killer effect against beasts, humans, dragons, and stone monsters. For a Trustmaster reward, this is pretty high, and there's not much reason to pass over it unless you have an incredibly high number of excellent attack boosting Trustmaster rewards already. And let's get a good look at the sneak peek of her abilities. Her cooldown ability looks like it's a startup move. It unlocks a quintuple cast, boosts the damage of some of her abilities, and gradually restores her MP. That MP restore is going to be extremely important. While I don't yet know how much MP each ability of hers costs, the fact that she can cast 5 of them in a turn will no doubt be a heavy drain. Huh, it looks like her second ability here already lets her quintuple cast on the first turn. I guess it's a passive ability. Flash kick suppression. That doesn't really tell us anything. Well, regardless, by the looks of it and the fact that everyone else is hyping her up, Zaneda is probably one of the strongest physical damage dealers that we will see. And even with that said, I don't really plan to summon her. Her damage might be meta-breaking, but we thought the same thing for every other character. Umbro Dragon Darkfina and Flame of Rebirth Jake are probably the only two characters that introduced a significant leap in damage. And even then I didn't try to summon them, since I wasn't particularly interested in them. I could already clear all the content without them anyways. For that matter, I'm even less interested in a unit who just showed up out of nowhere. But even though I say that, I don't advise you to blindly follow my decision. While you may think that I'm the type of person to just hoard and never spend, that's not really true. I'll only summon a character if they appeal to me. I summoned on the collaboration banner we had a while ago mainly because I wanted to, not because the units were meta-defining. I wanted to summon Katon, but I ended up missing my chance because I hesitated. That was such a terrible decision and I regret it even now. Would I have used her often? Probably not. So yeah, as you can see, my priorities probably looked pretty skewed. Again, just because I don't plan to summon her doesn't mean that you shouldn't try. Since it looks like she'll be getting a featured banner, it certainly won't hurt to throw your rare tickets at her if you don't want to spend lapis. Her Trustmaster reward and Super Trustmaster reward will definitely give an incredible amount of mileage, and I absolutely recommend that players who don't have a very powerful damage dealer at least try to get her. Even with Neo Visions approaching the Global Edition, her Trustmaster reward and Super Trustmaster reward will give an incredible damage boost to most physical attackers. There are absolutely no drawbacks in trying to get Zaneda here. Oh, it looks like she's also a breaker. I wonder if she's any better than Seeker or Freedom Vaughn. I highly doubt it though. If that were the case, there probably would have been much less hype for healing Avatar Lid and Seeker or Freedom Vaughn. Still, if you don't have either of those two breakers, I suppose she could probably suffice as a breaker as well. But this step up summon though, to guarantee her you need to spend 36,000 lapis to get one copy of her. Bruh. Yeah, no. A Super Trust Master reward Mugo is far cheaper. Because of the price, I'm not going to try to summon her and instead, well, let's see if I'll get her by accident. Maybe my decision on Zaneda will change when I do a proper review on her when she comes out. But for that to happen, she'll probably have to introduce a new mechanic or establish an extremely significant leap in damage compared to, say, War Hero Reagan, who's literally an option in the free coin we got a while back. Hmm. In other news, we have a boss rush survival event. Clearly, tackling multiple bosses in a row will require some strategic equipment sets to properly prepare for all of them. And yeah, no. I'm probably just going to go for a one-shot kill strategy here. Two chainers, one finisher, and with the fact that they're all different species of monsters, Mastermind Zon might not be too useful here anyways, depending on your unit roster. Hooray, free lapis! 
Fina and Dark Fina are also going to be in a bundle. Oh, it looks like they're receiving global buffs. They'll probably specialize in dark and light magic damage. And probably either fire or earth. I highly doubt that they'll throw four different elements on a unit. Even Umbro Dragon Dark Fina only has control over three. But a combination of Fina and Dark Fina, huh? They'll probably have the ability to cast white magic. I know I have Benevolent Beauty Rem, but I might consider getting this bundle. If the two of them have Chaos Wave Awaken Chains, then I may as well. Looking at their stats once they're released is going to be interesting. In terms of Trustmaster rewards and Super Trustmaster rewards, off the top of my head, they look pretty good. The Super Trustmaster reward features a 50% boost in both light and dark elemental resistance, which is pretty significant, but I have Paladin CISO, and that guy really doesn't need a boost in light and dark elemental resistance. It's better suited for other magic damage dealing characters. The Super Trustmaster reward isn't going to be too useful for me, but it might have high priority for other players. So yeah, as you can see, two new, probably interesting units are approaching the game. Zeneda features one of the best attack boosting Trustmaster reward and Super Trustmaster reward I've seen in a long while, but since I don't need them at the moment, I'm not going to bother trying too hard to get her. I'm more intrigued by Fina and Dark Fina because of their alleged global upgrades, which might affect her entire kit and significantly boost her damage. Unlike Awakenings, which serve to make an old character better, upgrades on new units tend to elevate a unit's performance to somewhere near the current meta. I doubt it would surpass Umbro Dragon Dark Fina's performance, as they'll probably carry some support abilities instead. My advice? Subscribe so you can watch my review videos once they're fully released. But for now, I advise saving your Lapis, as it's likely that Zeneda will be an incredibly powerful physical damage dealer that many players will utilize. But what if you don't have that much Lapis and are interested in the Esper units here, Vaughn, the 10,000 Rainbow Summon banner, and these two? While it would change greatly depending on your unit roster, I'll just go ahead and give different advice that can apply to different scenarios. No matter what stage you are, I don't really advocate summoning for Zeneda or Umbro Dragon Dark Fina, as you can get a weaker, though still powerful damage dealer from the free coin we got. That way, you could spend your Lapis on the 11 Rainbow Summon or Vaughn, no one in this pool really matches up to him as a breaker anyways. If you don't have that many units to begin with, I advise prioritizing the 11 Rainbow Summon over Vaughn. Does anyone else feel like they don't have enough Lapis to cover all of their bases? I don't think everyone has 36,000 Lapis to spare to guarantee getting her anyways. Well, next time I'll be showing a summoning video, so stay tuned for that.